Well, with the last one. You know that wonderful session we had this afternoon with Carl Hart and Gabor Matai and Julie Holland that Marsha moderated? It was called Drug Set and Setting Today. I think you all know what drug set and setting. It's a basic idea originated by Timothy Leary, developed by Anthony Weil, but it was a Harvard professor named Norman Zinberg who took that idea and researched it and proved it. That when you want to understand the influence of drugs, it's not mostly about the drug. It's also about the set, which is what you think that drug is going to do, and the setting, which is the cultural, the familial, the community context in which you use that drug. Norman Zimberg was a brilliant and remarkably playful intellectual, a drug researcher who broke new ground in so many areas of, of medical research, of medical treatment involving drugs. He was at the, the initial Drug Policy Foundation meetings. To present the award this time, I'm going to ask a past, award, a past winner of the Zimberg Award, Rick Doblin, to present it to Dr. Julie Holland. Um, it was my pleasure to meet Julie 26 years ago when she was a college student and she was a singer in a rock and roll band. And she had to decide between being the lead singer in a rock and roll band or becoming a doctor. And she had an intuition that MDMA could be helpful in the treatment of schizophrenia. And so she decided that she would leave her uh, rock and roll career behind and become a doctor. And one of the, <laughs> now she sings with her family <laughs> and her kids. Um, one of the times that we were visiting was around the time that MDMA became criminalized. And I was working on, I used to travel with my computer and my printer, and I was working on a letter to the Wall Street Journal about the hopes that now that MDMA was being criminalized, it would still be possible to become uh, a prescription medicine. And as I was printing out the letter, something happened with the printer and it had made this weird noises and it kind of malfunctioned and it printed out and all it had was the words, become more than a dream, which was one of the lines that I'd written. And as I looked more closely at the printer, I embarrassingly discovered that Several months before, I had dropped a tab of acid <laughs> into the printer and had lost track of it. <laughs> and at the time, I attributed this malfunction to this tab of acid. <laughs> but now I realized it was really Julie <laughs> and her influence and her dream about becoming more than a dream. She has since done terrific work writing the authoritative textbook on MDMA at called Ecstasy, A Complete Guide, bringing in all different parts of the discussion, bringing in loads of people, and she has donated all the profits of that to MAPS for MDMA research. Um, she, she later followed that up with the authoritative, definitive, comprehensive book on marijuana, pot, the pot book, and this She's similarly donated all the profits from that to MAPS for our marijuana research. She, um, she went on to write uh, Weekends at Bellevue about how her work as the psychiatrist uh, in the emergency room at Bellevue, which was optioned by Fox, and they spent about $5 million or so on the pilot, with one of the scenes being Julie's character being late, and then uh, her boss saying, it's okay if you just work with me on an MDMA fundraiser. <laughs> um, she has uh, served as the medical monitor on our MDMA studies, and I am sure that one day we will still get together and work on an MDMA schizophrenia study. And so it's my pleasure to introduce Julie Holland. I love this, it's beautiful. Thanks everybody. Um, I know it's been a long night, so I don't think I'm gonna talk for very long. Earth, fire, really appreciate what Arrowwood does. It's very important to me that you guys stay in existence. Um, and you know, there were many times where I would encourage the psych residents and the nurses to get on arrowwood.org to see 
what this drug was or what the combination was. And we, you know, the hospitals need to be able to access Arrowwood. It's very important. Um, and, you know, I don't like this idea that there's a big, tall wall between us and them. I don't like us and them thinking, you know. I agree that we're all in this together. Um, and it's really too bad. It, you know, um, it's one of the things that I like about Rick Doblin of MAPS is he really tries to sort of work within the system and not treat it as us and them, and I think that's really important. Um, my mom is a teacher. She's a science teacher. She was. She's still alive. She's just not teaching. Um, she's very empathic and uh, connected to people. She's a really good talker, great listener. And, and my dad is a mechanical engineer, very kind of... Um, obsessive and if he you know if he's working on lines of code he like won't stop until he figures out take it into the bathroom take it to bed with him you know he just he doesn't give up on something and um, the mechanical engineer in him was always sort of reminding me if if uh, if it doesn't fit don't force it you know you're gonna break it um, and my fit with Rick and maps and Ethan and DPA I'm, not, I'm really proud to call these guys my friends and my colleagues and really admire what they're doing and the sort of indefatigable doggedness. You know, you have to just sort of chip away at this and very slowly from the inside out. And, you know, I feel like there's a lot of momentum. I think things are going in the right direction. I, um, I like to teach people about science. I like to teach people about drugs. I um, These nonprofit books on, on MDMA and Cannabis, uh, the thing that they have in common is that these are both Schedule One drugs. These are both drugs that the government says aren't medicines. Um, and they're wrong. And, you know, the data is, doesn't really back up what they're saying. Um, and I, you know, we're all not going to rest until things change. I mean, even the entire AMA is agreeing that there needs to be uh, rescheduling. And California Medical Association and all these mayors. You know, what's amazing is that there's like... There's unanimous consensus among everybody that something has to change, except, you know, DEA and NIDA and I don't know who else. I don't know what's stopping everything from finally toppling. Um, but I do uh, uh, like this idea of people sort of standing up for what they believe and not just talking about it here, but going back into your communities and, and being more open about what you believe and that we really think the drug war is ridiculous and it's insane. I'm telling you as a psychiatrist, it's crazy. Um, I like I like the idea of the green uh, you know the green buttons the green ribbons I like the idea of you know April 20th being sort of a, a come out and you know wear your green ribbons and sort of out yourself um, these I don't know whatever we can do but uh, it was a great conference Ethan I had a lovely time thank you for inviting me thank you for my award. <laughs>